Welcome to Abiding Presence Lutheran Church, a place of grace. All are welcome. Our mission here is to seek God and serve others. What a blessing it is to join you in your homes for worship today. A few announcements for you. The South Texas Blood and Tissue Center is urgently asking for donors to continue to donate blood if they are well and healthy. There's a blood shortage in South Texas, and it poses a serious health risk to many patients who can't wait for this coronavirus to go away. Your life-saving donation helps ensure that blood is available for many patients in need. Abiding Presence is hosting a blood drive on August 23rd from 9 to 2, but all donations are by appointment only, so that way we can manage crowds and maintain safe distance. Visit our website, aplc.org, to make an appointment to serve others with this life-saving gift. And while you're online, look at an opportunity to seek God. On August 29th from 9 to noon, Abiding Presence is hosting a family faith formation day called Epic Tales. Now, Epic Tales invites children and families to learn about God's great love for all people with stories like Noah's Ark and Moses and Jonah and, and more. This online learning experience is filled with these stories. There's music to sing along to and crafts, and they all reveal God's love, calling us to share that love with each other. You can tune in and join in the fun on Saturday morning, August 29th, on our YouTube channel or on Facebook for a series of different video messages designed to help your entire family grow in faith. There's some at-home material for you also that you can pick up, but you have to go online to sign up to do that, and you can do that as well at aplc.org. Let us now turn our hearts and minds to worship. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God whose steadfast love is everlasting, whose faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Amen. Trusting in the mercy of God, let us confess our sin. Reconciling God, we confess that we do not trust your abundance and we deny your presence in our lives. We place our hope in ourselves and rely on our own efforts. We fail to believe that you provide enough for all. We abuse your good creation for our own benefit. We fear difference and do not welcome others as you have welcomed us. We sin in thought, word, and deed. By your grace, forgive us. Through your love, renew us. And in your spirit, lead us, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Amen. Beloved of God, by the radical abundance of divine mercy, we have peace with God through Christ Jesus, through whom we have obtained grace upon grace. Our sins are forgiven. Let us now live in hope, for hope does not disappoint, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Amen.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. God, our defender, storms rage around and within us and cause us to be afraid. Rescue your people from despair. Deliver your sons and daughters from fear. And preserve us in the faith of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. A reading from 1 Kings, chapter 19, beginning at verse 9. At Horeb, the Mount of God, Elijah came to a cave and spent the night there. Then the word of the Lord to, came to him, saying, What are you doing here, Elijah? He answered, I've been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, for the Israelites have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they are seeking my life to take it away. He said, Go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Now there was a great wind, so strong that it was splitting the mountains and breaking the rocks in pieces before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind, and after the wind an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake, and after the earthquake a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire, and after the fire a sound of sheer silence. When Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. Then there came a voice to him that said, What are you doing here, Elijah? He answered, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, for the Israelites have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they are seeking my life to take it away. Then the Lord said to him, Go return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus. When you arrive, you shall anoint Hazel as king over Aram. Also you shall anoint Jehu, son of Nimshi, as king over Israel. And you shall anoint Elisha, son of Shaphat of Abel Meholah, as prophet in your place. Whoever escapes from the sword of Hazael, Jehu shall kill. And whoever escapes from the sword of Jehu, Elisha shall kill. Yet I will leave 7,000 in Israel, all the knees that have not been bowed to Baal, and every mouth that has not kissed him. Word of God, word of life. Thanks Thanks be be to God. God. Let us see your kindness and grant us your salvation. Lord, let us see your kindness and grant us your salvation. I will hear what the Lord has to say a voice that speaks of peace. Salvation is near for the God-fearing, and his glory will dwell in our land. Lord, let us see your kindness and grant us your salvation. Mercy and faithfulness have met, justice and peace have embraced. Faithfulness shall spring from the earth, and justice look down from heaven. Lord, let us see your The Lord will make us prosper, and our earth shall yield its fruit. Justice shall march in the forefront, and peace shall follow the way. 
reading from Romans chapter 10, beginning at verse 5. Moses writes concerning the righteousness that comes from the law, that the person who does these things will live by them. But the righteousness that comes from faith says, do not say in your heart, who will ascend into heaven, that is, to bring Christ down, or who will descend into the abyss, that is, to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you, on your lips, and in your heart. That is, the word of faith that we proclaim. Because if you confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For one believes with the heart, and so is justified, and one confesses with the mouth, and so is saved. The scripture says, no one who believes in him will be put to shame, for there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. The same Lord is Lord of all and is generous to all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. But how are they to call on one in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in one on whom they have not heard? And how are they to hear without someone to proclaim him? And how are they to proclaim him unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. Word of God, word of life. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Well, kids, I'm back again. I'd like to tell you a story. It seems this little girl, maybe five or six years old, her mom and dad were expecting another child. And she kept counting down the days where her mom and dad were going to have this baby, and she didn't know if it was going to be a brother or a sister. She was so excited. So the day comes when, she, when the mom brings home a little baby brother. And she's so excited. She wants to hold it. She wants to touch it. She just wants it, all sorts of things with it. And the parents, they're just, be careful, it's an infant, we just be care don't touch it. We so finally, she gets to hold her little brother, and she smiles, and she looks into his eyes, and, well, it's time to go to bed. So the mom and dad put the little boy into his crib, and he falls asleep, which is a rarity, but he did fall asleep. And the little girl goes to her room, and mom and dad are out in the TV room and they're watching TV or they're reading stuff on the internet or they're reading a book. And they hear this commotion in the back of the house. So they kind of, they're worried what's going on. So they walk back real quietly to the baby's room where the noise is. And they see the little girl. And she's getting the step stool. She's dragging it over to the crib. And she gets on the crib, and she's looking over the side. The parents are saying, what are you going to do? And uh, the little girl leans into her brother, and she says, can you tell me what God sounds like? I forgot. As you grow in years and wisdom and in God's grace, you're going to be listening for the voice of God. Sometimes we think pastors have the voice of God because we have on albs and stoles. Sometimes you think the voice comes from really old people like Mike and Chip. <laughs> but what I'd encourage you to do is listen to the voice of God in the quietness of your lives. When life gets kind of confusing, if you can find that quiet place and listen to the voice of God. If you remember that little girl leaning over the bed and try to remind yourself, what does God sound like? Let us pray. Most gracious God, I pray for these future leaders of our church and of our city and our country as they continue to grow in your grace 
Grant them the wisdom to seek your voice and grant them the courage to listen to it. And this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 14th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead to the other side of the Sea of Galilee while he dismissed the crowds. After Jesus dismissed the crowds, he went up the mountain to uh, be by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. But by this time, the boat battered by waves was far from the land, for the wind was against them. And early in the morning, he came walking toward them on the sea. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified, saying, It's a ghost! And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. And Jesus said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat, started walking on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when Peter noticed the strong wind, he became frightened, and beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus reached out with his hand and caught him, saying, You of little faith, why do you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind ceased, and those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly you are the Son of God, the Gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, o Christ. Christ. This passage from 1 Kings, to me, is one of the great passages of Scripture. And I'd like to read to you the the particular passage I'm talking about. It's in the 11th verse. God said, Go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Now there was a great wind, so strong that it was splitting the mountains and breaking rocks into pieces before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake, a shaking but the Lord was not in the earthquake. And at the earthquake, a fire, a consuming fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, there was a sheer silence. In the Hebrew, it says there was a gentle blowing. Some translation says there's a whisper. We are a people who expect a God of the, what I call the God of the boom. That's part of our Christian mythology. Big picture God. Goes back to the beginning of Scripture. One of my favorite stories comes out of Genesis 1. It sets the mood of the entire Scriptures, the Hebrew Scriptures, the Christian Scriptures. To me, it makes sense out of life. It explains the purpose of Jesus in my life. In the beginning, there was chaos. And the beautiful thing about our, our, our opening hymn was it portrays the, the beginning in words. It says, A Holy Spirit hooted its brood upon the chaos dark and rude, and bid its angry tumult cease, and give for wild confusion peace. In the beginning was chaos. Two of our um, deepest fears as humans is water and darkness. Rumor has it that it rains occasionally in San Antonio. It is just a rumor. But I remember a few years back we had our 500-year flood. Then a couple years later we had a nine, another 500-year flood, which messes with my math. But one of the most heart-wrenching things I've ever heard on television was the Wimberley flood we had a few years ago. 
when that one sister was talking to her other sister who was on a house being washed down the river. This sense of flood terrifies us. And imagine what it did to people thousands of years ago who could not swim, who did not have floaties. But also, one of our fears is darkness. That's why we have flashlights, night lights, headlights, city lights. We want some light in the darkness. And these two primal fears can come together in the opening passages of the Bible. And we focus so much on God creating something out of nothing, it misses to me the beauty of the story. God brings order to chaos. The reason for the Ten Commandments and the other teachings is to bring order to a chaotic people who have no form of governing. Jesus comes to bring order to chaos. But we are a people uh, who expect the God of the boom. In the beginning, boom, God creates everything. The children of Abraham want to go home, and God and Pharaoh sort of duke it out. Boom, water turns into blood, frogs, gnats, flies, livestock, disease, people with boils, thunder, and hail, locusts, and then the final plague, God of the boom, big picture. The children of Abraham are going home. They come across Jericho. Joshua pulls out the ram horn, goes around a few times, blow the trumpet. Boom, walls come tumbling down. Perhaps no bigger boom than we get in the book of Revelation. Boom, it's over. That's who we've come to expect. What happens if there isn't a God of the boom? There's this beautiful young lady I know. As a child in youth group, she played around with the other kids, ran around all over church, typical kid stuff. As she grew in years, she had a disease that she was not aware of that started to affect the muscles in her body. At a time when a lot of kids were going to their high school dance, she was in a wheelchair. Eating became difficult. Swallowing the pills she had to take became almost impossible. Speaking became a chore. So I went and visited her a few years ago, and we started talking about life. And this, this young lady, she's in her 20s by now, her grandparents had been pillars of the community, very involved in church. Her parents, pillars of the community, very involved in church. And here she was in a wheelchair. And her thinking, one of two things happened. Either God doesn't care or God doesn't exist. She's in a facility and some really well-meaning Christians came by and said, if you prayed, boom, you're going to walk. So she prayed. They came back and said, if you'd pray harder, you'd get out of that wheelchair. And the harder she prayed, the worse she got. So in her mind, either God didn't care or God didn't exist. So when I was out seeing her, she said, Pastor Bill, I just, I just don't believe God exists. The irony in the whole thing is in her Facebook posts, you get words of inspiration don't give up on yourself. Such incredible spirituality coming from this quiet voice in a home of a young lady who did not believe in God anymore because the God of the boom wasn't there. But I heard the God and the quietness of her voice. We're looking for the God of the boom today. Cure COVID. Cure Alzheimer's. Cure cancer. We want the big picture gone. But I think the voice of God is that health care provider working a second shift. 
stroking the head of that person with Alzheimer's, holding the phone so that person with COVID can have a Zoom call. In the quietness of that room, you might hear the voice of God. In my previous congregation, I, have a, I had a Stephen minister who had an absolutely magnificent voice. And her care receiver was in her last months, weeks, and days. And the care receiver's request was, would you sing to me? So in the quietness of that house, this wonderful saint of God sang the lady's favorite hymns. No boom, a quiet voice singing the favorite hymns as this saint left this life to wake in the God's presence. The other night, maybe it was last night, the night before, one of the nightly news had a story about this pen pal relationship between this child and this elderly person. In the midst of all the garbage going on today, here's this child writing these letters to this very senior citizen. And the voice of God is coming in to that senior citizen's life. You are the abiding presence of Christ in our world. You have taken that name. You have joined this wonderful community of faith. And in this time of uncertainty, of fear, of chaos, you are also called to be that quiet, gentle spirit, that voice of God in the midst of our chaos.
confess our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe, I believe in, in God, God, the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Confident of your care and helped by the Holy Spirit, we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. For your whole church throughout the world, give courage in the midst of storms so that we see and hear Jesus calling. Take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. May we follow Christ wherever he leads. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the well-being of your creation, protect waterways, forests, lands, and wildlife from exploitation and abuse. Help the human family endeavor to sustain and be sustained by the resources of your hand. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the nations and their leaders, in you steadfast love and faithfulness meet, and righteousness and peace kiss. May nations in conflict know the peace that is the fruit of justice, and the justice that is the path to peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those in need, everyone who calls upon your name will be saved. Accompany all who are lonely. Hear the voices of those who cry out in anguish and support those who are frustrated in their search for suitable work or an affordable place to live. We pray for those suffering this day, especially the loved ones we name in our hearts, either silently or aloud. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For our congregation, you have gathered us as your people in new and different ways, and we thank you for this gift. We pray for students and teachers preparing for a new school year and for those struggling with unexpected hardship. Supply us generously with your grace for our life together. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give you thanks, O God, for the saints of the whole church from all times and places, and for the saints in our lives and in our community whom you have gathered to yourself. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In the certain hope that nothing can separate us from your love, we offer these prayers to you through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Let's share a sign of peace with those around us. Text somebody, call somebody. Who's the person that needs to hear your still small voice today? Peace be with you. Johnny, peace be with you. God comes to us in the silence. God comes as a whisper, as a gentle blowing wind. Abiding Presence seeks to listen to this voice of God in this chaotic world. Every gift that you share enables this congregation to share what we hear. 
and to encourage others to listen, to seek God, and to serve others. Thank you for your continued generosity. My life flows on in endless song above earth's lamentation. I hear the real, though far off hymn that hails a new creation. No storm can shake my inmost calm while to that rock I'm clinging. It sounds an echo in my soul. How can I keep from singing? What though the tempest round me rears, I know the truth it liveth. What though the darkness round me close, songs in the night it giveth. No storm can shake my inmost calm, while to that rock I'm clinging. Since love is Lord of heaven and earth, how can I keep from singing? When tyrants tremble sick with fear and hear their death knells ringing, when friends rejoice both far and near, how can I keep from singing? In prison cell and dungeon vile, our thoughts to them are winging. When friends by shame are undefiled, how can I keep from singing? No storm can shake my inmost calm, while to that rock I'm clinging. It sounds an echo in my soul. How can I keep from singing? Let us pray. God of goodness and growth, all creation is yours, and your faithfulness is as firm as the heavens. Your word is a light for our path. Nourish us through the gifts that we might proclaim your steadfast love in our communities and in the world. Through Jesus Christ, our strength and song. Amen. Please join me in thanksgiving for the word. Praise and thanks to you, holy God, for by your word you made all things. You spoke light into the darkness called forth beauty from chaos and brought life into being. By your word, you called your people Israel to tell of your wonderful gifts, freedom from captivity, water on the desert journey, a pathway home from exile, wisdom for life. Through Jesus, your word made flesh, you speak to us and call us to witness, forgiveness through the cross, life to those entombed by death, the way of your self-giving love. Send your spirit of truth, O God. Rekindle your gifts within us. Renew our faith, increase our hope, and deepen our love for the sake of the world in need. Faithful to your word, draw near to all who call on you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. For your word of life, O God, we give you thanks and praise. Amen. 
And now let us welcome our new intern, Stefan Swanson, with a service of beginning. Let us pray. O oh God, through the Holy Spirit, you illuminate the minds and sanctify the lives of those who are called to be pastors and teachers. Look with favor upon the seminaries of the ELCA as they seek to instruct those preparing to serve in the ministry of your church. Bless your people in this congregation who by word and example aid your servant, Stephen Swanson, in learning to do the ministry for which he is being prepared. As we diligently work together, grant that our lives may be enriched and our ministries fulfilled with joy to the glory of your holy name. Amen. The Apostle Paul writes, Now there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of service, but the, name, the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. In the coming year, the intern will work with the supervising pastor, lay committee, and this congregation to be formed as a pastor and develop skills for pastoral ministry. I ask you, Stefan, are you willing to assume your partnership in ministry here, and will you seek to engage in that ministry to God's glory? If so, answer, I am ready, and I ask God to guide and help me. I am ready, and I ask God to guide and help me. The members of this congregation and the supervising pastor are asked to accept this intern as a partner in ministry, welcoming him into our homes when it is safe to do so, sharing in his learning and growth, and encouraging, supporting, and praying for him. Now I ask you, people of abiding presence, will you receive as your partner in ministry and uphold, the support, uphold and support Stefan in every way? If so, answer yes by God's help. Yes, yes. by God's help. Almighty God, by whose call we are at work, bless us in our labors together. Let us pray. God, we ask you to bless abiding presence and Stefan. Make us faithful to your word. Empower us to show one another and all creation your justice and love. And bring all at last to your heavenly home. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. May God go before you to show you the way, be behind you to encourage and inspire you, be beside you as your faithful friend, be above you to watch over you, and be within you to give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. Be at peace. Christ is with you. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.